Have you been thinking about getting a wireless transmitter or upgrading your current transmitter? Well, let's take a look at the Mars 400S Pro and see if this is a good option for you. Let's get right into setting up the wireless transmitter now so I can show you how it works. And the camera we're gonna be using today is the Sony FX6. Now, you don't have to have a camera like this. You can really use any camera as long as it has an HDMI or SDI output because this transmitter accepts both. You can mount the transmitter anywhere you want on your rig. It comes with a built-in cold shoe that also has a quarter 20 thread on the bottom. So it gives you a lot of options. So if you wanted to, you could just quickly throw it onto a cold shoe and tighten it down. But for me, I'm actually gonna use this little bracket that comes with the tilt -a cage for the FX6, and it's built specifically for mounting wireless transmitters. There we go, so you can see how nice, sleek, and compact that looks already on the side of the rig here. Like I said earlier, the transmitter accepts both HDMI and SDI input. So if you have a camera right now that only does HDMI output, that's okay because now it's upgrade proof if you ever decide to upgrade to a cinema camera that has SDI output. There are three different ways that you can power the Mars 400S Pro. The most basic one is to use a Sony NPF battery. Now, I can't do that because the transmitter is sitting up so tightly against the body of the camera, so that's not an option. Another option I have is to power off of USB-C. There's a little USB-C input on the back, and you can do anywhere between five to 12 volts. I'm not gonna do that either. I actually purchased separately a little power adapter that goes from barrel connection to D-tap. And that way I can screw right into the transmitter and then plug into one of the D-taps here on my V-mount battery so I get really long battery life and I don't have to worry about swapping out another different battery like a Sony NPF. Now let's go ahead and power it on. The FX6 comes with an LCD, but it's difficult at times to see if things are actually in focus and how things are exposed. So I always like to use an external monitor. And if you're using something like the A7S III or the FX3, it also has a small LCD. So I know you guys like to use external monitors like I do. So I'm gonna mount the Ninja V on the top here. And I'm actually powering it with the dummy battery here. And then I've got a barrel connector to a D-tap here as well. So I can run everything off of this one battery on the back. Now, something nice about using a more proper cinema camera is you have multiple outputs. So I still have a full-size HDMI output here that I'm gonna use to send a signal to the Ninja V. So why did I choose to do SDI output to the transmitter and HDMI output to the monitor? Because the Ninja V has an HDMI output and a lot of monitors do, so you can loop out to a transmitter or something. So, I mean, I could have easily done that, right? Plug this in and then plug it down into the transmitter here. But I'll tell you why I didn't actually go this route. And that is because of latency. I want to reduce any added latency as much as possible. So instead of coming out of the camera, into the monitor, and then out of the monitor and into the transmitter, which is gonna add just a tiny bit of latency, I can just go direct out right into the transmitter. Now, the latency on the Mars 400S Pro is already really low at only 0.08 seconds, but I didn't wanna add any additional latency to it. All right, now that we have the transmitter all set up, let's take a look at the receiver side. And it actually has the exact same body, the form factor is identical, all the buttons, in and out ports, everything like that. So I'm gonna actually power this off of a Sony NPF battery. That way we can be nice and mobile for something like a remote focus puller. But if you want to have a really permanent setup like a director's field monitor, you can use the included power adapter that comes with it and just plug right into an outlet and you know you're never gonna run out of battery. So I'm gonna get our monitor set up here on a little mini tripod. And the only thing left to do is plug a full-size HDMI cable into the output on the receiver here. And then I'm gonna plug into the input on the monitor. And boom, there we go. We're getting a live video signal from this camera to this monitor here. And there are just so many different ways that you could use a wireless transmitter. The most obvious ones, like I already mentioned, so you can have a remote focus puller. He could look at this monitor here, check the focus and pull it for you with a wireless focus wheel. You could also use it, of course, as a director's monitor so he can see what's going on. I actually used this exact setup a few weeks ago when we were filming a live music performance. That way the client could see everything that was going on in real time and they didn't have to be huddled up behind our camera. 
So now that we know how to set it up and some possible use cases, let's talk about the actual build quality. The Mars 400S Pro has an all aluminum body. It just has a really solid construction. There's no cheap plastic on it, so you don't have to worry about breaking it or accidentally dropping it. I can see this getting a lot of use without much wear and tear. The button layout is really simple and easy to navigate. There are eight channels. You could just use the arrow up or down to change them. It's as simple as that. And once you get there, you just hit the little stop button and that's the channel that you're now on. You can also get into the main menu where you have more control options by hitting the little stop button here and holding it down for just a few seconds and then you'll see it go into the main menu. So within this main menu, you have controls like fan speed. So there is a built-in fan to help, you know, mitigate the heat that this puts off. And you could completely turn that off if you want to. Maybe you're recording audio very close to the transmitter itself. Now, when it comes to fan noise, yes, I can definitely hear it just sitting right here but typically your microphone isn't that close to the transmitter. I mean, my mic is right here. This is probably as close as it will ever be to the transmitter or receiver. Let's stay quiet for a second and hear if you can actually even hear this. This monitor is actually much more noisy than the transmitter, so let me turn it off for a sec. There we go. Now we just have these two transmitters with the microphone right here. Let's see if you can hear them. it doesn't make sense to have this equipment on set where the microphone is. So no, I don't think the fan noise is gonna be any problem for you. Now also inside of the menu, you have some things you probably won't get to nearly as often like system settings, network info, um, version info, and things like that. The transmitter can do a whole host of different standard frame rates and I'll put them all up on the screen right now. So the Mars 400S Pro gets part of its name from actually how far the distance can go, which is 400 feet. It's very simple, very intuitive. Hollyland names all their stuff that way. Now, usually I wouldn't have my camera and the receiving monitor 400 feet apart. That seems a little bit extreme for me. On average, it's usually 20 to 50 feet away on set and that's about it. Now, something cool about the Mars 400S Pro is that if you want to, you can actually use it with one transmitter and two receivers. So you could actually have two different monitors set up. But you, of course, have to buy an additional receiver separately. Instead of doing that, you can actually use the mobile app, which I think is really cool. So let me show you guys how to set that up really quick. There's just this little Hollyview app that you open up and you go right into connecting it. The transmitter actually puts out its own Wi Fi signal. All right, and there we go. It took a couple seconds for it to actually pop up, but my phone can actually view exactly what's on my camera now. So that is pretty cool that you could have other people on set looking at it on their phone, maybe your client. Let's check the phone latency. It actually looks pretty snappy. You can see it's the same on the monitor down there receiving it. And you can actually connect up to two phones or tablets for remote viewing in the app. Honestly, I've been really impressed with the Mars 400S Pro using it over the past couple months. It's super solid. But if I had to nitpick one thing, the only thing I can think of is the way that the antennas screw on and stay in place. So they screw in place just like normal, like you would think. But if you accidentally tap it a little bit too hard, they can come loose. Right now it's not happening, which is a good thing. But there've been times when I accidentally kind of hit it other than that small thing that almost never happens, I really think the Mars 400S Pro is a great investment. And at a price point of about $650 US at the time of filming, I definitely think it's worth it. It's not really expensive like some of the Teradex that are two and $3,000 and above. You definitely get the great performance that you need at a nice price point. If you are interested in picking one up, definitely check out the links in the description below. And I wanna say a special thanks to the guys over at Hollyland for sending this out for review. They didn't pay me to say any of this or see this review before posting. All right, guys, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now, and I'll see you in the next video.